Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and this is Let's Make Art and we do a different project every week and I'm so excited about this one because we're doing something different. We're going to be lettering on your own tote bag. And this is included, it's actually blank, so it's included in your subscription box. If you have this with us, we have a quarterly subscription box. But if you don't have that, you can just find the tote bag laying around. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you just need something blank. You can still go through this lesson. I'll go through different things that will help if you want to make something bigger. Um, so even if you don't have this, you can still gain stuff from this uh, tutorial. So the supplies that we are going to be using for this one are the tote bag is one. Second is this marker. So piece of paper. I'll show you. It's just black. So what it is, is it's just a fabric pen, but it's cool because as you see, it still has a tapered tip. So it's pointy at the top and then wider at the bottom, which is the same thing as all the brush pens that we've been using before, which was made by Tombow. This is made by Sharpie. And so this is a fabric pen. So what I suggest is if you are doing something on fabric, find a fabric pen. There's other brands that are great too. Um, but I would just recommend that if you do end up using this a lot more because it's made for fabric. So that's why it's a fabric pen. That, and then I'd recommend having some tape if you have scotch tape or just regular tape and then also blue painter's tape. So I'll explain why we're gonna use that a little bit. And then just scratch paper. So what we're gonna be doing is creating a template. Um, so that's all the supplies you need. Then the four steps that we're gonna be doing are the first one is I want to show you different options of creating your own style. So because this is a tote bag and it's a big deal and it's something big, I wanna be able to show you different styles that you can do. Then we're gonna go through thumbnail sketches, which I've talked about a little bit, but that's something that I'll explain more, but we're gonna do that to help create your layout. The third is making your project bigger. So that's the big thing that, the big thing, <laughs> the big thing that we're learning in this project is making it going from something small to something bigger because this is a lot bigger than what we've been doing before. And the fourth one is using the fabric pen, fabric pen to letter on your project. So first, like I said, was exploring your style. This is a outline or it's it's an outline. Um, it's a practice worksheet that you can download for free. If you don't have our subscription box, go to our website, the lettering tab, find the tote bag kit, and you'll be able to see this there. So this is for you to practice. So if you notice what I did was I created, there are three different styles. And then in addition, what I did was I broke it up. So you'll see that there's some space in between the different strokes. So with lettering, what's a little bit different than your standard cursive is that we're gonna break it down into stroke by stroke. So this is just a practice. When I'm doing this, if you want to, and if you haven't before, I suggest watching our beginner lettering series, and then you can have this out with you as well. This is also a PDF that's on that that you can download um, for you to practice the different foundation strokes. But I want you to just go for it. And so what's happening? Ooh, this is so juicy. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> I've only used this right now on the fabric, so I haven't used it on paper yet, but this works great. So I am taking it stroke by stroke, and what's happening is it's thin on the up and then thick on the down. Thin on the up, so I'm gonna lift up, and then I'm gonna do this stroke, which is like this one, the J. That was a little off the camera, so they couldn't see that. Oh. J. J. Similar <laughs> to the J. Thank you. Um, okay. Thick on the down, thin up. So this one is just straight up and down. And then this style one I wanted to show was... We went over, but um, if you haven't watched it yet, I would go back. There's the video is called Stop Wishing, Start Doing, or that was the project we did, and I talked about angles. So the beautiful thing about lettering is when you're designing this, I want it to be personal for you, So which is why we did BU, but you also can make it however you want. So when you're thinking about your lettering, one of the things you can dictate is the angle. So you'll notice that this one is more straight up and down, and then this one is more angled. So I'm doing this so you can practice and you can create the muscle memory for right now. So I'm still going to take it stroke by stroke, 
put all of my down strokes especially, so you'll notice this one's a straight line and this one's an angled line. So I angled it like that, as well as my curves are angled. So I'm actually gonna take this in two strokes. So thin on the up, thick on the down. I realize why this feels awkward. So I'm going to tilt my paper a little bit. So this is something if you are new to brush lettering, I would try and angle your paper. If you're right-handed like me, you might wanna angle it this way, and if you're left-handed, you might wanna angle it that way. So that just helps you, instead of being so straight up and down, I just it feels a little bit stiffer, whereas if you angle it, it feels more natural. So thick on the down. So that's another one to practice. Then the last one that I did was this one is talking about shapes. And so with lettering, another thing that you can think about, which I love talking about, because it's not something that you might realize is happening, is these shapes are more circular, which is why this looks different, whereas these shapes are more oval. So, this is my pencil. So these shapes are more like this. You wanna scoop that up? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry. Thank. I mean, please. <laughs> You're good. Um, whereas those are more circular shapes. So this is something that you can also dictate. And this is something cool to experiment with is if you have a skinnier card or a design or something and you want to fit it, maybe you make your lettering a little bit skinnier, more oval. So when I'm doing that is I'm still going to take the same strokes, but what I'm doing is that I'm just going to make my shapes closer together. I'm not really changing the height of anything, but I'm making them closer together like that rather than on this one, I made them wider apart. And the other thing that I wanted to mention is experiment with the, also the look of your letters. So not only are you experimenting with the angle or the shape, but you can also experiment with literally how you draw your B. You might do it completely different than me, and I love that, and I wanna see that. Um, but for this one I showed, you can maybe draw an entrance stroke that's like that, or maybe it's just a little curve like that. So you can experiment with that as well. So again, this one is a more oval shape. I love this pen. <laughs> um, thick on the down, thin on the up, thick on the down, thin on the up. Okay, so once you do that, you can. I left more space so you can practice a little bit more and figure things out. So those are just a couple things that you can experiment with. Then the second step is thumbnail sketches. So thumbnail sketches, what they are, are they're essentially a smaller version of what you're gonna be doing in your final piece. So what happens is that if you look at any design, if you look around you, I'm sure someone thought of different, different options to get themselves there. And the thing is that since this project is so big, I don't think you wanna draw a BU that big 12 different times or however many different thumbnail sketches you want. So the whole idea of thumbnail sketches is just to make it smaller and not literally the size of your thumb, but they're smaller versions of sketches to get all the ideas out of your brain so that you can see which one you, you visually like. Because a lot of times we hold ideas in our head and then you might, when you see them, you either might love it and that might surprise you or you might be like, mm, I don't know if that's the right thing. So you experiment from there. Although it would be cool to see like a bunch of little BU thumb, thumbnail size all over the Like the literally? Bag. Yeah. I draw myself little circles. Yes. <laughs> I'll do that. That'd be cool. <laughs> I'll do it just for you. Um, okay, so this is also another handout. But all this literally is is just squares. So if you don't have this, you can draw yourself your own squares or they're kind of rectangle. So the idea is that whatever your final project is, so maybe if you're drawing, if your final piece, your tote bag is more um, rectangle and vertical, maybe you extend these a little bit more. The idea is just to make a similar shape. So it's not exact, I'm not doing math, I'm not doing the equivalent measurement. I literally just kind of guesstimated and then drew squares or rectangles according to that. So draw these for yourself. And then what helps is when you're designing and then you can design inside of it. So if you think about it, if I were to draw my lettering really small, literally like a thumb size. There you go, Keenan. Thank you. Is that visually looks really funny. <laughs> Unless maybe you like it. It's like you want to be subliminal. Be you. Be you. 
be <laughs> um, it's really small on this big if you envision this being a tote bag that is a very small design so what you're also doing is kind of visually helping your eye see spacing wise how big you want your design to be so let me I drew a couple just to start us out so maybe you they don't have to be perfect either but I'm just drawing myself a little sketch. So maybe um, it's that size. And when you're doing this is I want you to, like I said, get all the ideas out of your brain and options. So a couple of things you can play with are, in addition, and maybe Keenan, can, you can make a little thing so that they can on see what hand. it looks like on my, on my hand. Angles, <laughs> you can cover my hand. <laughs> Think about the angles. Think about the uh, shape of your letters like we talked about. Or maybe you add in a block font. So there's a lot of different things that you can experiment with. So also layout or playing with how many words you have. Maybe you want to do a completely different quote and you totally can. But what I mean by layout is maybe I stack my letters or maybe I decide that I want to make them all on one line. So that's another thing to think about. Then, what was another thing I said? Oh, I said maybe you experiment with the block font and like that. Or let's see. Another thing, oh, also flourishes. So we learned that in the previous project is talking about flourishes and extending your letters. So I like this, but what if I extend the Y? Is this dark enough? I can draw it darker. Yeah. Okay is I extended the Y, this is two different lessons, is it's a flourish and then it's also, I talk about creating a home in the Mother's Day project. So I'm saying that my Y kind of created a home under there and I like that. So nice. Or what's another thing? You can also, oh, so then we have this where maybe you want to play with a different style of a B. So maybe my B starts like that. Let's do that again. So like that. So you you can just change one thing, slight thing. So maybe if this is in block font, I want to experiment with, oops, B in cursive. And then what if U is in a block font? Or what else was there? Oh, angles. All of these, all of these are all straight up and down. So I'm going to draw this one, but I'm going to angle it. B. You. Okay, so looking at this, I I like this. One. Actually, I like all of them, but I think I'm going to go with this one so it looks close to the example that I did. One thing that I realized is that I, I'm going to just make this one more time. I'm going to concentrate a little bit more. And I'm going to draw it a little bit smaller. Mm, yeah, that feels good. Let me make this a little bit bigger. That looks cool. Thanks. So what I was thinking about was this one was really close to the edge, so it just didn't have as much breathing room. Um, also, I didn't even think about this. You can play with, we have so many other projects where in the journal project we talk about adding a border, so you can totally add a leaf border. I was going to say the way you made the home on that Y on the, on the middle one, yeah. on the bottom, looks like a leaf. Oh, it does, because I and that'd be, Yeah, that'd be really neat. I love that. Thanks, Keenan. You're welcome. Those are very sloppy. <laughs> that's what it is. It's a thumbnail sketch. It's not supposed to be perfect. Um, that's an option. Or maybe you draw polka dots. So again, this is your place to play, experiment, see what ideas come out of your brain, and play with that. So then, once you do that and you pick the one you like, I like this one, is this is the step to make things bigger. So like I said, if you have a project or you just have a, a lot bigger of a piece of paper and you're drawing something bigger, a lot of the times, well, what could happen, and if this is running through your head, it's okay that if the, you're thinking this, is I can't do that. And I've heard people say that they get intimidated because it's so much bigger and they just, they don't feel like they can. And I promise you, you can. And there are steps, which I will show you to help you do that. Because 
I don't want you to feel paralyzed and I want you to do this and empower you. So the first step that I like to do is I draw myself a grid. So actually, I'm gonna show you the fine, what we're gonna be executing. So this is my template. So I'll show you how to make this. And what this is, is this is a bigger version of this, which will then become this. So to do this, this is my template. The first step is I'm going to draw myself a grid. So I'm gonna use this and I'm going to literally just draw a line over the top and both horizontally and vertically. So that is my grid. So I essentially made four different grids. Then what I want you to do is take two pieces of, of whoa, I said that really funny, of scratch paper, <laughs> of scratch paper. And so this is how I'm gonna make my bigger template. Nothing fancy about this, this is just scratch paper. So what you're gonna do is take, I'm gonna draw on the other side so it's the blank side, is take this and you're going to make yourself a template that will fit inside of here. So <coughs> that is what I'm gonna do. So it's about, Keenan, I need your thumb. My thumb? <laughs> it's about three inches. Because <laughs> remember you were saying how that, wait, what did you say? Oh, your index finger. Oh, index finger. Yeah. His index finger is literally an inch, apparently. <laughs> um, so it, yeah, about how it, I don't know exactly. <laughs> Just overlap it. Eyeball it. You're overlapping to create a bigger, ooh, this has fun stuff on it. Well, anyways, you're making a, a bigger piece of paper for yourself. So that is that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore, try and ignore this line. What I'm gonna do is pretend like this is one big piece of paper and I'm going to also make four different quadrants. So to do that, I'm gonna fold it. This is what I learned in school. I'm gonna fold this hot dog. Hot dog? Did you learn that? At school? I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna teach you. <laughs> this is hot dog way, which oops, that didn't. I'm, so I'm familiar with hot dogs. Okay, so think about this. Hot dog versus this is a hamburger. Which, I mean, this, uh, this isn't a good example. The reason why is hot dogs are skinnier and longer and hamburgers are whiter and fatter. So this is whiter and, <laughs> whiter and fatter than this. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes Am sense. I, I swear. I, mean, I know what a hot dog looks like. Okay, so. hot dog, hamburger. Fold it twice, fold it horizontally, fold it vertically. That's all I want you to do. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. <laughs> and then what I'm gonna do is you can either eyeball and use this as your quadrant, or you can just draw yourself your own similar lines as this guy. So take that line and then this line. You can also use double-sided tape if you have that. Um, okay. So that is my template. Then what I'm going to do is I need to make this bigger on here. If you are talented and you can freehand it, please go for it, which meaning if you can eyeball it and just go like that, you can 100% do that. Did I do that right? That was hot dog hamburger. Wait. Why does that feel different? Sorry, hold on, I wanna check this. No, Did we're good. Did you hamburger okay. fold before you Stop. hot dog folded? <laughs> There's no, <laughs> There's no order. Oh. I just, I wasn't sure if I, I just wanted to make sure because this feels, okay, we're good. <laughs> um, what we're doing is we're going to take it into smaller pieces. So instead of drawing something really big, like I said, can you think of this as one quadrant so these are, you're gonna be drawing essentially four different little drawings. And so what this is training your brain to think also about is think of, you're visual, visually drawing what you see rather than just drawing the letter because we go on autopilot and just draw a letter. So if I do this exactly, am I in a good spot, Keenan? Yeah, if you go one quadrant at a time, it's perfect. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, so. I can see, I'm just going to literally show you. It also doesn't need to be exact. 
this is just a rough sketch. So it helps me to see, I have all this space right here, so I'm gonna have all this space right here, and I'm going to draw. So it's kind of like you're sketching. Can you give us a hair flip there, Nicole? Thanks. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm just drawing what I see. One, two is the right part of the B and then the E. So what you can do once you have this, and this is kind of your guideline, is you can just continue that. So I was like, how did I draw this B? So I see this shape and then this comes through and connects to make my E. And then the other thing is when you're, it's okay if it's not centered because we can move it on the template. Cause I was gonna say this looks a little off center to me. Um, but I'm just trying to get my guidelines for myself. So that was quadrant two, three is this, and then essentially the Y. So, and if, you, if, it, if it helps you, you can even take it a step further and you can break that again. Kind of like, this is a little drawing lesson. So this kind of comes across. These quadrant things always used to confuse me as a kid. Well, really? Yeah, I mean, up till like last year. <laughs> Does that make sense now? Yeah. What was confusing? Because I want to know so I can help other people uh, if they're confused. Well, I don't know that it was ever explained to me as to how to do it. So I just looked at it and was like, nope, can't do it. And then that may be what it was. So, so does here's this a quote sense? for you. Those who say can't, won't. Say it can't, won't. Mm -hmm. So if you tell yourself that you can't do it, you won't do it. Hmm. I like that. That makes sense. Yeah. So we should say can, will. Yeah, get can't out of your vocabulary. There we go. You heard it from Keenan. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like that. So, okay. Oops, I kind of cheated and then I knew that that was there. Anyways, it's not cheating. I was just helping myself because I knew I had to draw that anyways. And then the last part is OU. Do you want to bring the OU up a little higher? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, and this is going to go over my scotch tape. Oh, you. So I am literally going to stand up because I need to see what I'm looking at because <laughs> this is such a big piece of paper. So the once you did that, you successfully made your project bigger, which is the whole thing that I want you guys to accomplish from this. Then when I'm looking at this is I, which is why I'm going to stand up again. I say to take a step back and look at things. You can also go like this, but I realize you can't see what I'm looking at. Um, is I want you to take a step back and see what you're designing. Cause you're essentially designing your own tote bag. How cool is that? Um, so take a step back. If you realize that B is really big and U is kind of smaller to me, but I also like that. Cause it's telling you to, well, I guess either way it could be B or B. That's all personal preference. But I'm just gonna leave it for now, but I want, so what my eye is visually looking at, and this is just something also I can teach you guys, is if you notice this shape and this shape are the same type of stroke, which is the same foundation stroke. So I realized that mine got a little wonky. So I'm just gonna, do that a little bit, so to make them more similar. And then I also see that just visually there's this negative space right here. So I, where's my eraser? Aha, thanks. I'm going to just move this down a little bit. So again, this isn't something that you have to do. I just realized it now, and this is why you do this now. Maybe I draw this lower. So you can take the time to design it how you want it to look. Then, 
Okay. Maybe I'm going to add a little loop here on the B. Oh, that's nice. Aw, thanks. Okay. So once you have that, take this time to practice. So practice getting to know this brush pen since it's a little bit different and it might feel different than the Tombow dual brush pens we've been using. But take this time to think about which parts need to be thicker and which parts need to be th thicker, thinner. And just draw over this. So I'm gonna add a little flourish here. Ooh, that fun noise. This is such a big stroke, so I have to really lift up. So thin on that up. B. I'm gonna mimic this. So we learned this in the flourish where I'm gonna copy and mimic this and add it here. Ooh. So it's okay if your paper gets in the way. Did I add something at the bottom? Oh, yeah, I was gonna say, I noticed this empty space, so I wanted to see what I did on my example, is on the Flourish project I showed this, is what if you extend this back? Mm. Yeah. So the cool thing, and the other thing that I just wanna bring this up, while we're designing, because this is kind of a design, graph design thing that I see, is by doing this and having this curve come up, Keenan, tell me if you see this, it's, it's, your eye is naturally going like that with it and then it goes back into what you're trying to show. Rather than if I left it like that, which is totally fine, your eye might be going off the, off the grid, off the page. Yeah, it would end. Yeah, which again, isn't right or wrong. I just wanna show you that it's a cool, it's a mental thing that we're, I'm trying to teach you guys to look at is how can you, how not manipulate, that's the wrong word, but kind of how can you help guide the eye or your viewer to what you're looking at? It's kind of, it's just creating a more harmonious look. And that's what we're doing. So then on the up. So with, it's cool, it's really interesting with this pen is it's a lot, it's not as stiff. So it's more flexible. So I can really get a thick, thick um, with this guy and I'm not really pressing that hard. So let me take a step back. Yeah, that B is really big, but that's cool. Okay, so even though when you're looking at this, it's not centered, because it ideally I'd probably wanna shift it up a little bit to be centered right here. It does not matter because, ooh, that's a little wet. Because mm. you went over the tape. Yeah. I just want it to get on the tote bag. The sketch tape. Well, this is called real life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is, so I have my blank tote bag and I have my template. Guess what? Whoa. You did all the hard work. Can they see it through? Yeah. Yes. Look how cool that is. So you created your own template and now all you have to do is trace. So this is the final step. And what I, why I was saying that it didn't matter if my design was centered on my template is that I can manipulate and figure out, you just stand up, is where is the center if I'm eyeballing this? That feels pretty good. Okay, so the reason why I have you have scotch, or now, you can use scotch tape actually, it would be fine because it's not paper. Do you want to scoot that up a little bit so they can see the bottom flourish? Yes. Oh, can they see what I'm doing though, that I'm taping the top? Should I move it down? What can you see, people? I can share a different angle. Okay. So what I'm doing is, move all this stuff is it will just help if you tape down your template because we're trying to make things easier for you and not there's you just trying to eliminate all the variables that something could frustrate you so just tape your template down make sure it's still yeah so i'm going to tape this down 
if you want to take it a step, take it a step further, which I'm going to do, is I'm going to set myself up and I'm going to tilt this a little bit and then I'm going to tape my tote bag down. Am I a good spot, Keenan? If I leave it like this and people can see? Yeah, it's, I can. Yeah. Okay. So I can I'm adjust it however you need. Okay. So I'm going to tape this down. Maybe I'll do so that it won't move as much. Okay, final step, the brush pen. Like I said, this is a fabric pen and some also I will mention, not all fabric pens have this brush tip. Some just might have a regular felt tip type of um, tip and that's totally fine, you can still do this. And it was in the Mother's Day project that I went over photography, and so you can, if you still want to create the thin and thick lines, you can just do that with um, any type of pen, brush pen, or any type of fabric pen. So when you're doing this, I know you might be intimidated to start. Actually, I have a tip. If you are nervous to go for it because this is a tote bag, it's a little bit different than paper, just help yourself out and maybe on the inside where no one will ever look, just, just draw some lines. That might make you alleviate some pressure of this needing to be perfect. Just draw some lines, no one will ever know that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I am going to think about the same thing of thin on the up, thick on the down. So I'm gonna go thick on the down and when you're doing this, I want you to just go for it. So when you're doing this, you notice that it kind of, because when I was doing this, this kind of bubbled up a little bit. Maybe I need to tape this tighter, or I'm just using this hand to kind of keep it smooth for me. So what I want you to do first is draw it like you normally would, where thin on the up, thick on the down, and then I'll show you something else. So I am literally just going to trace what I did here. And if this hurts your hand, or if it cramps to do this, just lift up, it's okay. Just go back and overlap it, thick on the down. So I'm overlapping it to make a new stroke. Thick on the down, even this out. So here's a little secret is, you also don't have to listen to me. <laughs> you can go the opposite way. Because you have a template, is, we're not so focused on, on going the right direction or making thin on the up, thick on the down. So if I were to do this, I might even go this way. Just because that, I don't know why, that was just my natural thought to do it that way. And then just kind of color that back in. So you can do whatever you would like, but that just helps. I don't know why I like to go that way for that one. Then thick on the down. I don't know why, but I keep thinking of different words or phrases you could put on here, and I just think of beef stew. <laughs> what? B-U, beef stew. <laughs> that is so random. <laughs> I really hope someone does something like that. I, I'm excited to see what people draw on their own toe bag. I'll make you and Keenan that says that. Do you like beef stew? You're okay. Who doesn't like beef That's stew? That's so random. Maybe it's not random. <laughs> I don't know. Be you beef stew. It just it rhymes. <laughs> Does it? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so what I wanted to show you was if you're looking at this, take a step back. And if you like how thin these thins are, you can 100% leave it that way. If you want to make this design a little bit thicker or beefier, I got you. Beef it up? Beef it, beef it, beef it up. Um, what you can do is you can take the concept of what we did learn in philography where you're just adding a thick line to the downstroke, which you already have, but you can make it thicker. So what I could do is I'm gonna use this just in case so I don't smear anything. So I'm gonna make this line thicker. And if you want a really black line, you can just go over it a couple times. So I made that line thicker. And then in contrast, if you like that contrast, you can leave that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just make these a little bit 
thicker. So it's still a thin line in comparison, but you're essentially drawing back over. So I'm making, so this is so thin. Thin is also horizontal, or I usually do horizontal lines. So thin on the up, thick on the down, thick on the down still, and then thin on the up. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit thicker. So, thick on the down. Wow, I don't know if my stomach got hungry because you just said beef stew, <laughs> or if I'm actually hungry. Beef stew has that effect on people. Gosh, thanks, Keenan. <laughs> um, making this a little bit thicker. Okay. So thin on the up, so this thick needs to be thicker. And then also another tip is when you're doing this, I would think about angling your pen a little bit more and maybe more than you're typically used to because that way you can use the full belly of it. So I'm using the full belly of it. Keenan can do a side shot so you can see that. Sweet rather than, so if I'm gonna do the same stroke and do this here. So if I were to draw straight up and down, I might not get as thick of a line if I go like that, rather than if I draw more with at an angle and my brush pen, I can get more surface. So down up, so I can make this a lot thicker like that. So I'm using, the brush pen is really smushed, if you can see. Does that toe bag seem to be absorbing a lot of the ink? Because it's not as dark. Well, yeah, and is it easy to apply it? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, it's really, it glides on. I'm not pressing too much. Well, I guess I'm pressing harder than I probably would on paper. Um, but it, you're not, I don't think, I mean, let's see. Yeah, it's not like it's going all the way through. Is uh, that what you're thinking? Yeah. Because I was pressing so hard. No, I was just thinking about how, because you're doing a double layer, basically, where you have more, I just was wondering mm. if it was just going to separate more. I don't know how to use the words that I'm thinking. You're good. And verbs and nouns and... And you're good. No, that was a good question. So again, I, I don't know why my hand wanted to go that way. That was a good thought. Yeah, it's actually, it seems to be good. So I am going to wait on this just because I know that my hand goes across. So I'm going to wait to do my flourish of my Y. And then I realized that looking at this, so this is also a really cool thing. So what I'm visually looking at is I noticed that there's a lot of space here. And because I decided not to connect my Y to my O, I don't want it to look too much like B, Y, at E, O, U. That wasn't a word. You, -E -O -U. you get what I'm saying. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, you can freehand it, but if it also freaks you out, just move this over. That makes me feel better. Did you make that noise because you like it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was really cool. I don't know why I don't think of things like this, but then it just happens when you come up with the idea. Genius. Oh my, that's good. That's what I'm here for. Okay. Now, so you can see that I moved it over, so on my whole template. But now that feels better and it's closer together. So again, I'm gonna go thick on the down. I'm gonna use the full belly. I'm gonna go thin. I'm gonna lift up a little bit because I felt myself cramping, so I'm just gonna overlap like that. And then make this a little bit thicker. So the idea is that all your thins are pretty similar in width. So all of these are pretty similar, and then all my thicks are pretty similar in width. So like that, and then thick on the down, then on the up. Ooh, I got a little shaky right there. It's okay. 
And then, there we go. I'm gonna color that in, I want that to be a little bit darker. So when you're doing this, one tip that I can give you is, if you're drawing this shape, you will notice that it rounds out. Is this a good spot for me to teach? Yes. Okay. It rounds out like that rather than it's not a curve like that. But what I'm trying to show you is that if you were to, actually, I'm going to pretend that this is just a regular pen like that. And so you need to thicken it. So when you're doing this, what I'm trying to show you is that if you thicken this, make this line thicker and then gradually go into that thin stroke. So, Yes, yeah. So it creates that similar look as to what I did with my brush pen. So when you are thickening up your strokes, you want it to have a similar guide into the thin. So you're creating that look as if you did it on purpose. And it guides the eye into it. So how's it look, Kina? Oh, I need to finish. You're like, uh, Other you're not done. Other than it not being done, it looks great. <laughs> okay. Well, shoot. Oh, well. I realize Sorry. I moved this. It seems to have, I had a little more attitude in my voice. I didn't mean to have that much attitude. Are you have attitude towards me right now? <laughs> you paused? So what I had to do was I just made the flourish a little bit different because I realized my template was a little bit different underneath. So I need to thicken these. So these are my thins, but I'm going to make them a little bit thicker. And we go over the flourishes if you want to learn a little bit more about that in the Bloom Where You're Planted project. Okay. Now I'm just going to even things out. So when you're looking at this, this is the same thing that I'd like you to do is take a step back and see what you're working with. Maybe... You either stand up or you put it in front of you. And that's it, actually. <laughs> I was yeah. like, is there more to it? Um, remove your thing, your tape very lightly. Oh, I know what I wanted to say was, if maybe you're not a black and white girl and you wanna add some color to it, you 100% can. And the cool thing is that this brand Sharpie, Sharpie, everyone knows what Sharpie is. Yeah. Um, also, so this is the full pack. So this is in your subscription box. If you have that with us, you also can still buy it actually. But we have this, so this comes as a, in our, in our subscription box. Oh, and we're gonna sell as a kit. So you can get it as a kit. You don't have to buy your own tote bag. Anyways. So excited. Because <laughs> I realized that that's possible because we wanted to make it easy for you guys. This is the pack of this, and we also have these on our website. And so if you want to add some color, there are so many colors. And I've also heard that, which you can use these as brush pens. So if you just want to practice, let me bring my, oh, here's my scratch paper. Is there, are all these, ooh, G? You want to put that closer to B? Like, there you go. Ooh, highlighter. I'm just gonna show all of them. Uh, y, B. So that's, ooh, P. I'm drawing the first letter of each word, of each color. Not I sure if you got I figured that out <laughs> because I didn't know what you were spelling. <laughs> I realized I should have said that before. Uh -huh. I started, I think Guy I'm gonna just. <laughs> ooh. That's a pretty color. Highlighter. Oh. These are highlighter. These are bright. And now we're done. Wow. You made your own tote bag. And I'm really, I'm genuinely so, so excited to see your own. I know this is something that once you make, you'll be able to wear it. People are going to ask where'd you buy that. And you can say, I made it. How cool is that? Um, Please share what you make. So we have a Facebook group called Let's Make Art Lettering where you can show us, you can share. If you are nervous to maybe wear it out in public, just post it on in our group and I'm sure you'll get encouraging comments. Um, 
We also have, like I said, we have a subscription box or we have a kit. If you don't have these supplies, you can go through it. If you don't want to do that, understand. And we have all our templates on our website that you can also get. Um, so we just like to have fun here together. I'm really excited. Thank you for being here with me and good night. <laughs> I don't know why I say good night, but okay, thanks, bye. <laughs>